Wait a minute. 602, I'm two minutes late. 602 Arizona time. That's 6, 7, 8. Is that 8 or 9 Eastern time? It's, it's, it's quite a bit later for you guys. And if you're on the East Coast, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're on our wait screen right now, but the end, the wait screen is hanging up, which is irritating. But it's life when you're a, a live you know, podcaster, screen printer, whatever you want to call it. You guys, I think it's time to start the show, huh? Is everything going good? Can you hear me? Let me know in the chat before I officially start. Because, uh, again, I'm, I'm experimenting every single time. Um, yeah, what time is it on the East Coast, man, right now? Because it's 6 here. So it'll be 6, 7, 8. Three hours. Yeah, it's about right. So it's 9 over there. Jesus. Well, fam, I'm glad to see you here. Let's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do a moment of silence and we're just going to get right into the intro. Uh, and you know, I'll say what's up to everybody at the end of the show. You know, the routine, uh, let me get all set up here. Boom. All right, here we go. We are live in three, two, one action. What's up everybody. I'm glad to see you here. Welcome to the print life live video podcast. But before we get started with all that, you know what I got to do. Gots to roll that intro. Dun, 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 dun. What's going on, Print Fam? Welcome to the Print Life Live Video Podcast. And eh, what's happening, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, if this is your first time here, I welcome you. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you. But we got to get through some introduction stuff before the show actually starts. So. Here's the first thing. Um, I started a new hotline. This is super important. I bring this up before we even get started because the hotline is hot shit. And my vision of this show from this point moving forward is actually to acquire more questions through the hotline than in the damn chat. Uh, The main reason is just for interactive purposes. We get to hear some different voices from my own on the show keeps the interaction up and honestly i would prefer to listen to a question than to read a question so call 800-806-3518 right now hit extension 5 as soon as you hear the voice you know the guy go welcome thank you for calling monument limited hit extension 5 because it's a secret extension um and then you know ask your question or make a comment or a statement or submit some shop news And then when you've done it, hit pound. You can listen to it, delete it, play it back. But when you're ready to upload it, hit number three to actually upload it to the server. Okay, this hotline is going to be the new format more than likely, especially for the Q&A. We'll do some chat Q&A at the end, but the majority of the Q&A is going to be submitted through the hotline. That's my vision for it. It's a lot more fun for me and for you, and it keeps the audio portion of this thing going a little smoother. So I'm excited about it. Anyway... Other than that, here's what's happening today on The Print Life. As always, we jump right into independent shop news from The Print Life Facebook group. Uh, After that, my business topic of today is going to be about something I've been going through to to the 10th degree over the course of the last two weeks, which is staying motivated in business or or whatever, in life in general. when you when you hit the ceiling or when you hit the wall, how you stay motivated? I'm going to talk about that partially, uh, just to help myself with it, and then maybe it will help you guys in the future. I don't know, but that's going to be my business topic of the day. Because let's be honest, when it comes to business, it's all about motivation and belief. Anyway, moving on. After after I get through that thing, then we're going to conduct my live Q and A. And again, I'm going to reference this one more time. Call the hotline right now, 800-806-3518, extension 5. Leave your question, comment, or whatever, uh, because that is going to be the way we acquire questions, more or less, from this point moving forward. So call right goddamn now. I'll give you a second. Here, we'll take a moment of silence. I'll do a gigantic cheers to everybody with the corona light. Blink. Call the number. And ask your question. You part of the fam? Call the number. We want to hear your beautiful, angelic voices 
on the show. I'm tired of I I'm tired of it and y'all are tired. I didn't even do the cheers. I'm tired of it and you're tired of hearing my voice all the time. We all want to hear your beautiful voices as well. So call the damn number right now. And actually, you know what? The next show I'll put the 800 number right up here for those of you who forgot. It's also on the Monument Limited website. 800-806-3518, extension 5. Call now. All right, now let me get through the social media reminders. I'm sorry. These intros are so long, guys. If you're just tuning in, I got to get through all this before I can get to the meat and potatoes of the show. Uh, Social reminder, follow me at Cam Irvin on Instagram and on Twitter. If you haven't done it, go do it right now. Share with everybody that you know on all of your social accounts that we're live right now. Because here's the thing. I told you guys before that when we hit 100, I would start bringing guests on. I tried it. My equipment failed miserably, but I've got all that sorted out. I'm ready to bring guests back on. But I'm not going to trouble them with the effort until we're hitting 100 live viewers consistently throughout the portion of the show. So share, share, share this show all the time. Of course, share my YouTube, my YouTube, my YouTube content, my YouTube content, right? That's a platform, YouTube. Pretty sure. Share my YouTube content. Um, and then remember, guys, we're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. A Mountain Standard Time, which is about 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, and it's about 5, I think, on the east or on the west, on the far west, California, or maybe 5.30. I don't know, something like that. And last but not least, if you guys actually want to be on this show, if you want to be, uh, I'm just I'm saying what's up to Instagram because some of them are tuned in. They're hanging. I got my, my, I got my phone up here on my thing, just hanging out, letting them. It's kind of like a, a little creepy. You know, they're just watching me do my thing here, but they're hanging out. They're watching. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, if you're interested in being on the show, man, get, hit, hit me a, hit me up on the DM. A few of you have already done it, and I have every intention of bringing you on into the Skype call, and we'll do a we're gonna start doing a side by side show. Okay, this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna not only do a Q and A with a a particular guest, but we're gonna kind of have them in side by side for the show. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm excited to do it. Uh, if you're interested in it. Get your Skype game on point. If you want to put a microphone into your Skype to get a little bit better audio, that would be beautiful. But if you just want to use your phone and Skype in that way, you can do that too. But yeah, DM me on Instagram if you're interested. Direct message me now. And that's pretty much it, guys. So the next portion of this sucker is to jump right into our independent shop news from our Print Life Facebook group. So let's get over... Let's, uh, dude... I'm hanging up on my words. I'm just, I'm not all there. Let's go over to the Facebook group now. And uh, let's see what's happening. Now, you know what? I want to play something real quick because I listened to this earlier. It's a great piece of advice. And I just feel like uh, better now than later to play this this, this particular statement because it was very helpful. And I was like, oh, shit, but I got to give credit first. So here we go. Let's play this. Yeah, what's up, Cam? This is uh, Rob with Fitment Printing. Uh, I didn't really have a question, but more... What's up, Rob from Fitment Printing? Thank you so much for calling into the hotline. I super appreciate it. Uh, Before I go any further, because this is our inaugural run, can you guys hear him? Is he coming in loud and clear? Let me know in the chat. Anyway, moving on. More of a statement. I noticed uh, on the last few Wednesday nights we've been missing a bunch of uh, shop news, so I just wanted to give you a little tip on that. Um... If you go to the search function on Facebook and type in uh, news or shop news, uh, and then right under the banner there, you can hit sort and uh, sort by most recent instead of most popular. Mm -hmm. You'll see all the uh, shop news posts that you've been missing and hopefully hit a few more. There it is. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Holy shit. Well, thank you, Rob. That was extremely goddamn helpful. Hopefully you guys heard his... uh, there's a little piece of advice in there. Uh, I typed in news, and now I'm filtering it by most recent, so I'm actually getting an accurate feed. Thank you, dude. I don't know how I missed that. Fuck. So let's... Uh, actually, I feel like I want to start from the oldest to the newest. A lot of questions. A lot of questions, but that's okay. Ah, fuck it. 
Okay, well, now we're going to stop from newest to oldest. So, the first one is from my boy William Center, and he has some shop news for me. Dude, the second I start drinking beer, like, my goddamn, my thing, I don't know, my, my esophagus starts burning, and the burps start boiling out. It's crazy. I'm very uncomfortable right now, but I don't care because it's my end-of-the-day beer. Indigenous Graphics. They got two jobs already. One for local tribal meat processor, and the other is for a group of military moms for their sons coming home in May. Have two meetings this week and next week for Chamber of Commerce and the Tribes Casino, which will ah, shit, which will be huge because the casino has a lot of foot traffic and a nice spot where their gift shop is located. Uh, Hope the print fam has an awesome week. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, William. Dude, that would be sick if you could get into like a merch environment, especially at that casino. That means they'll be reordering all the time and it'll 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 help you. We have a few clients like that that are in, you know, like shops and they're constantly reordering. It's amazing. Next one is from Kevin Gunn. And I'm spitting on myself. He's got some news. His daughter scored a job for his shop doing a 40 shirt order this week. For a brand out there in Austin, Texas, and you never know, you never, this is true, dude, you, you never know where the next order might pop up from. So true. It's funny, actually. I, I learned this in the car business, that you, it's called pre-qualifying, and the trick to sales, right, to being a truly gifted salesman, or to... There's there is a line on this where you learn to pre-qualify people, but you should never pre-qualify. One of the things that I learned in the car in the car business was that you could, um, dude, I would pitch and and I would demo a car to anybody if I had the time and I wasn't doing anything. I would demo it to what appeared to be a bum off the street, and it didn't always happen, but I did sell a Honda Civic. It was a, I don't remember what year it was. But it was like the, I don't remember what generation, but I sold the Honda Civic to somebody that I was for sure, for sure, had no money. And it was because I didn't pre-qualify this gentleman, and I sold him a car. Uh, same thing at this particular print shop. A young kid comes in, looks like he's not 16 years old. He's clearly in high school. I think nothing of him, uh, but I give him the time. I talk him through some stuff. He placed a print order that day, a rather large print order. And I got that order, I think, from him because I didn't pre-qualify him and I talked to him just like I would any other customer. Uh, so not pre-qualifying is a huge, you know, it's a skill and it's a necessary s skill, especially in the world of sales and trying to acquire new clients. Because like you said, you never know where that next job will come from. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that, Kevin. Uh, James, or, I'm sorry. Jay Barnes has some news. He has a 600 shirts to do for the Super Bowl. 50 MVP Von Miller of the Denver Vrom... Dude, dude, can't read. Clearly can't read. One more time, from the top. 600 shirts to do for the Super Bowl. 50 MVP Von Miller of the Denver Bron Broncos. The Broncos. Why do I want to say the Denver Broncos? It's weird. <laughs> It's because of the first uh, Vaughn. Vaughn makes me want to say Broncos, right? Vaughn Miller of the Denver Broncos. He was also able to get his company logo on the back of one of the sponsors, as one of the sponsors. That's awesome. Good job, Jay. And let's just, he's got some photos here, so let's take a, let's take a gander. Vaughn Miller Day, the third annual Vaughn Miller Day, April 21st, 2018. Damn, along with some other pretty hefty sponsors. Nice job, buddy. Pretty hefty order. Very nice. Congratulations, my man, Jay. You're doing good, my friend. And from Gerard Kennedy, this is a question, so that's going to be reserved for later. Oh, Cam has some news. Uh, did I tell you guys about it? This will be the third time. Call 800-806-3518 to submit your question, because uh, that's how we're going we're gonna to take questions from this point moving forward. 800-806-3518, dial extension 5, record your message, hit pound to review it, hit 3 to upload it. Do it now! Uh, Gerard Kennedy, what's up, print fam? Looking for a... Okay, this isn't news, but this is an interesting idea. 
and I think we'll run with it. If you, as a print shop, are looking for, are looking like for a particular item, not selling, but looking. If you're looking for something and you're having a hard time finding it, go ahead and submit it in the shop news, and I'll shout it out, and maybe some one of the listeners will hear it, and they have what you need, and it'll work out. So here we go. Gerard Kennedy is looking for a 6 by 6 that won't kill the pockets and that holds great registrations. Any suggestions? So if you guys got something like that, hit up Gerard Kennedy. He's in the Print Life Facebook group. Let him know what you got. Maybe you can help him out. Again, I'm not gonna count. I'm not gonna shout out if you're selling shit, okay? Because that now it's a classified. We might as well be fucking tradio. Uh, Alex Meza did a uh, no underbase red. Shows us a picture of it. Wants us to know what we think. I'm looking at it here. The red is bright. If you're listening to the audio, go to the Facebook group, check out Alex's uh, post, and you'll see it's a bright red with no underbase. It's pretty impressive. Uh, we got Dalton Hutton here. He's got some fresh, he's got some fire news, actually. His press arrived today, exactly 30 days after he ordered the whole kit. It's ready to get going, printing them T-shirts. And he's got a video here. I'm going to go ahead and play it. If you're just if you're just listening, it's a really killer. It's a Riley Hopkins press. It looks like he got the dryer as well. The whole kit is that a yeah? It's a four station six color. Looks clean, man. You're gonna like that press. The new and yeah, dude. The new and improved Riley Hopkins with the um, roller bearing registration gate. Boom. It's awesome. And also, you can buy. I think Action Engineering and a few others has like. Uh, M&R palette adapters, so you can start utilizing M&R style palettes or whatever. So that press is a winner, man. It's definitely a winner. I don't know if it has side clamps, but if it does, that would be even more sweeter. Uh, okay, Brian Buffka's tune chiming in on some stuff here. Brother, Brian, like... Uh, Brian, I would love for you to call in so you could tell me how to pronounce your name because I feel like I'm say I say Buffka. Excuse me, and that's probably right, but for some reason I feel like it's not right. So if you could call in and let me know how to fuck and pronounce your last name, it'd be awesome because you're you're you know I say your name a lot. So he's got some shop shop news from about order my gear, and they received apparently thirty five million from an equity group for expansion. He saw this on uh, printwearmag.com. You know what? I'm going to tune into printwearmag.com. You're not going to be able to see this, but let me see what this means. So they got an investment from an, uh, an equity group in Pennsylvania and Israel. So they're, it's, they help streamline ordering fulfillment, in particular from a team and group apparel. Right, so more than likely, it's stores kind of similar to Inksoft's store platform, which, by the way, I am going to add something similar to the site very soon once we get our, our initial core launched because, those, you know, I can see how they would be beneficial to a lot of people. And their whole, apparently, this whole, the whole platform for Order My Gear is it's very similar. It helps you set up stores, merchandise stores for teams and schools, as far as I can tell. And automation in the custom period is a techno. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I would like, I need to read into more of this to this order my gear. Okay, here's a link to ordermygear.com. Now, I can't tell if this is a store or if this automates um, the, the actual process of taking orders from clients. Because if it does, this may be a, 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 a side by side solution for what I'm building for you guys. Stacks of paper order from. Group stores, everyone pays. Yeah, so this is more of a stores platform. So it's not exactly what I'm building, but it is pretty cool. And I am going to actually build something into this, into the Print Life platform. Uh, once we get the core foundation built, I am going to do an automated store thing for groups and all that kind of stuff. Very similar to what Inksoft's doing and very similar to what these guys are doing. I feel like Order My Gear will probably do it better than Inksoft, but maybe not. Inksoft's got it pretty well dialed in well thank you for sharing that dude that's that was that's pretty good i liked it ah shit i just closed it all down dude all right moving on 
Thanks, dude. That was that was actually a good share. Surprisingly enough, that's cool. I think that that's cool that they're doing that. You know what I mean? I mean that's too big. I would never want to be involved with anything that gigantic. What a goddamn nightmare! But it is cool. Uh, it'll probably be gobbled up by somebody at some point. I like it. Don't know what I meant when I said that. I just started saying stuff. Sometimes I do that. I just say things and. Questions, questions. I'm reading through a lot of these are questions, guys, and you know I don't like to do that at this part. Question. Question. Uh, Mark Marshall Atkinson just did another uh, podcast on the big idea, and this is from um, Deborah Sexton on how to develop great public relations for your shop. So you definitely head on over to the big idea and listen to that. I like the podcast. Hate mine. Couldn't finish it. Because I have some uh, bad habits when it comes to interacting with people. But overall, I love that thing, man. There's a lot of really good information there. I like it a lot. I would like to take this podcast to that level and beyond. But uh, I think that they got... He's, he's interviewed a lot of really good people, and I will be reaching out to the majority of them as well to start bringing them into the show. Because he's got a lot of great information there. Uh, Michael Stevens has got some shop news. Uh, they got a new commercial space. Build out is about ready to get real. So they're just starting the build out. He's showing me some really killer blueprints here that he's done on some graphing paper. It looks good, my friend. It, congratulations. Shop news. This, ow, this is from April 4th. This is from Andy Smith, and it says it's a live. This is a video of something that he just got up and running, so let's watch it. Okay, he got a, a conveyor dryer up and running, so good for you, my friend. Was it a refurb? You refurbished it? Oh, man, it's a MaxiCure from M&R. Great. Congratulations, dude. And I think this is where we ended up last time. This is April 4th, which would have been... It last Wednesday. So we got through all that. So we've made it through the independent shop news portion of this show, guys. Uh, anything else to uh, to add to it? I feel like that's pretty much it. Thank you, everybody, for... Um, uh, questions, questions. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. But okay, cool. And we also, as this thing was going down, we had five more people that want to join. Let's just go ahead and hit approve all for all of those folks right now. Let me go over to Instagram. Nobody's watching, so... Yeah, yeah, Mike. Matt, dude, yeah, this is it, but it's over, dude, so we're outie. Oh, if I can figure out how to end it. Why not let, yeah, why not let it go live for a little while? Okay. So I feel like we did a pretty good job getting through the news. So now we're on to the um, the goddamn business topic of the day. And this one's going to be a little rough for me. Well, let me get back to our feed with the chat. This one's going to be a little bit interesting for me only because uh, I've been struggling over the course really just of the last two weeks is to, to, to keep my mo – well, I'm not being completely honest there. I would say over the course of the last month – the the last two weeks of the vlog, I was like already like, eh, fuck, this is starting to feel old, like it's, it's too easy. And so I was already starting to lose my motivation for it. And then I launched a Kickstarter campaign, and then that went off well, but then I, I saw very shortly after that it wasn't going to get that it wasn't going to get funded, and that was kind of a dumper. But then I got an uplift because I got some alternative financing and everything is looking okay. Uh, and that was... That's, I guess, the life of business, right? You have your ups and your downs and all this kind of stuff. But it does lead me into a, an, a mindset of – or just a being mindful of my motivation and, and where I'm at motivation-wise in business and in my life and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like this is a good opportunity to talk about it. And it's a great for, or a forum to talk about these kind of things. So I'm going to take this opportunity to do it. Now – what ended up happening, ultimately, is I, I pulled out Google Docs and I just started banging away, more or less like a journal entry, but uh, from somebody else talking to me personally, like as if I was asking advice from a third party on how to handle it, 
but I was writing it to myself. And what I'm going to do instead of like freestyling this one is I'm just going to kind of read it and then elaborate on it. And hopefully, you know, it really touched, it, not touched, but definitely hit home with me. Because I do. I, I'm one of those people that constantly needs and, la- and wants motivation and sometimes it fades away and then it comes back in a rush and anyway let's anyway let's get into this thing i'm going to start reading it and then i'll elaborate on it and we'll see if it hopefully helps some of you guys but this is my business topic of the day staying motivated vitted and for me like many of you guys i think one of the biggest challenges in business is i've said this a million times already but i'm gonna do it again staying motivated Uh, And it's particularly difficult to stay motivated when you have hit a plateau or, you know, they they might call it a wall or a ceiling in your business or in the skill that you're pursuing or working towards. When your growth has stopped altogether, you often, all of us are confronted with a lack of motivation. And we may even say to ourselves, ah, fuck, I think I've I've reached my, my pinnacle. This is as far as I can go. And, and, you'll, and you'll stop working on it. Now, any highly skilled person, whether we're talking about an athlete, an artist, or a mechanic, they have all experienced this problem. All, I mean, ultimately, they've worked for years at some kind of skill or trade, right? And, and, ev- and like at some point, inevitably, they get to a sticking point. Or you, they stop getting better. Or they got bored. Or they're tired. And... When they get there, you know, and we're talking right now about a highly skilled person, an elite tradesman. When they get to that sticky point or that wall or that plateau, they may take a small break. But the thing that separates them from the rest of us is that they always get back after it. Okay, now they may get stuck. They may get bored. They may feel like they're done with it. But at some point, they go back after it. And they stick with, they stick with working on it and training at that thing, even if they don't feel like they're progressing. And they stick with it long enough until eventually they break through that wall, or they push through that ceiling, or they climb over, or they make it down that plateau. Uh, and that is the path to true mastery. I'm sure many of you are aware of it. I just felt like somebody walked in, but we're cool. But that is the path to true mastery. Um, but I do just I this is a point where I have to emphasize that m- the majority of people that do that that get to that I think mastery is a, a little bit of a cliche word it's mastery is a very difficult thing to do but the majority of people that can push through one or two or three or four different ceilings or four different levels of skill are the, they're the one percenters the majority of us on this channel are we are not one percenters yet we might be on our way we might be pushing towards it but the majority of us aren't there yet and that gets me thinking like well what's the difference between them and us right why are we is can one could one of us watching this show could me or you could we be a one percenter and if so what do we have to do to get there what like what do we need to recognize it and then realize that we're there and then push through it like what what do we got to do and um the more I think about it, and the older I get, the better I, the easier it is for me to recognize when I'm getting to the to one of those stages, and I guess kind of accept it, roll with the punches, uh, wait for the motivation to come back around, and then I'll you know on to the next level. But I think before you can do that, the first thing that you have to be able to do is recognize that you are actually hitting this wall, right? Now. The way you see that happening is you might find yourself struggling to work on a particular project. You know, that project might be boring you, or you may find that you're not progressing through that project. Or maybe you're you're utilizing the same old bag of tricks, right? Oh, it's it's becoming easy. That could be one thing. Um, or there may be uh, a, a particular, uh, let's say, aspect of your business that needs your attention. But 
you're not really interested in doing it, right? And you know, you may even know, like you may be going, oh yeah, that's what I need to focus on to, to get myself to the next level, but you don't want to. Maybe you're tired, maybe you're bored. Uh, you may be at a point in your business where you don't know what to do next. You've, you've learned, you've grown, you've put in the pieces of the puzzle together, you've done all these things, and now you've hit this wall. I'm doing uh, the ceiling, because a wall would be this. You've hit the ceiling, and uh, you got to get through it, but maybe you don't know what to do, right? I, I think that that's another form of this. Ultimately, if you're finding a particular situation difficult, growth is slow, or you're not getting the, the desired results that you want, then you've hit this ceiling, this wall, this plateau, right? Um, and I think that, when, and just the caveat to that is when you first start a particular skill, a particular business, a particular idea, you, you know you know that there's a sticking point because you don't know anything about it, right? So you always, most of us get through that first one. It's the second one, the third one, on our rise up, that, that where we start to really lose motivation, I think. Most people can start something, but when they hit that first roadblock is where they, yeah. You know, might get a little scared. They might reluctantly push through that first one, but then the second or third one is where it kind of starts to separate the the talkers from the doers. But then there's that separation of the doers the, to the elite doers, right? And then you can keep going down the line, making this up as I go. Uh, anyway, now I'm reading this thing because I kind of got off topic here. But no matter what, Whatever is happening to you, if you're getting stuck or you're feeling a lack of motivation or inspiration or not knowing what to do, you've, you've definitely hit a ceiling, okay? And um, this is a prime opportunity when you've hit these ceilings, and this is where most of you will lose motivation, or my, myself included, dude. I'm a prime example of this. We'll lose motivation. We've lost our way. We don't have the answers we need. We're just stuck, and you might stop pushing forward. Okay, and that's that's the thing, and I think a lot of us do that, and I know that I, I literally the last couple of weeks I was just like, eh, you know, barely dragging myself out of bed, and I'm not depressed. I just don't know what to do with myself at the time. Don't know what to do. I don't know what my next stage is, so I'm no longer motivated to keep pushing forward. Um, and I do think that these plateaus and these lacks, these, these walls or these ceilings are what will stop the majority, you know, the dreamers. This is where they stop is the first big one, the, that defining moment where you're going to say, eh, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to push through it. This is what stops the dreamers and it brings the doers into, you know, in uh, whatever, fucking, I don't even know what to call that, but the, the doers show up and this is where they exist, right? Um, and, uh, the dreamers will pretty much have no follow through. And, um, like many, like many people with certain things, I'm guilty. I'm as guilty of this as anyone else, but don't let, and I think that actually everybody is. And I don't, I think even an elite, per, like an elite person that has pushed through those plateaus can be an elite at one thing and a complete hack at something else because they're not willing to push to go through that pain again and again and again at whatever it is that they pursue right but what you will find is that people that seem more motivated or that seem to have had more successes and wins um, have just pushed through those ceilings more often than those that haven't and this this is like true time and time again no matter what book you read or what kind of bib bibliography you read whatever man it's always the same thing the the ones that find the success in life and in family and in their business and in all of these things are the ones that hit the ceiling and find a way to push through it and then they hit another ceiling and they find a way to push through it those quick to rise people the ones that seem to just go into the stratosphere from nowhere they are like the exception they're not the rule i think the majority of people that find success just keep pushing keep grinding it out and eventually they break through right so that's the question and now i'm just starting to repeat myself hopefully not but that is the question that i'm asking myself right now is so i, I acknowledge that i'm kind of at a sticking point so what steps can I take and what steps can you take when you get there to get back on that upward trajectory to break through the goddamn wall? 
and I think that um, you have to ultimately you have to recognize that it's happening, and when it's happening, I mean it's just work ethic, right? You have to find a way to push through it, even when you're bored to death, or when you doubt that, it, that this thing will work, or when you don't think you can get any better. You have to find a way to push through it. Uh, and and in my in my experience and from what I've seen, sometimes it does require taking a step away. Maybe it takes an hour. Maybe you got to step away for a day or a month or you know a half a year. It depends on what it is that you're doing. But whatever that thing is that you're doing, you got to take a step back. Okay. And then I think when you take that step back, if it's a true passion, you will find your your brain starts working on ways to fix it again, right? And sometimes taking a step back helps you reassess the situation. So I would say the first step. Take a, take a beat, you know, gather your thoughts, and you'll feel it, I think, when the time is right. Now, don't let a year pass, but maybe you need a month, maybe you need a week, maybe you need a couple of days. You'll feel it when it's time to get back after it. And just like me right now, I took a beat, took a breath, and I can already feel the creative juices flowing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, this is what I was excited about with that, right? Like with the live show, I kind of forgot what I was excited about with this thing. Now I know. And like with the with the software, I forgot what was so exciting about it, which was helping you guys. And now I remember, and I'm like, okay, you know, this isn't all just about the money. This is about this and this and this. And like, this is a really simple process. I just need to do this. I do this. I do this, and then we're done. And just like with the print shop, it's the same thing. So taking a beat helps you out, uh, and it gets you. It helps you find your motivation again. And I think Arnold said it best. The way that you find success is being able to tolerate the pain of growth. That was definitely not verbatim because he said it much better and in a really weird accent. The way to success is to the top. Of the, what the fuck? You know, he said some stuff. To the top. You, get, you have to be able to tolerate that pain. Worst Arnold impression. <laughs> Don't ever do it again, dude. Don't ever do it again. Don't do it. But eventually you'll get through it. And when you get on that upward trajectory, um, what can you do to keep the momentum going forward? And that's what I was asking myself when I was doing this. For me, when it clicks and when you're like actually starting to crush it again because you're, you're feeling good, you're feeling confident, you're growing, you're starting to see results which you haven't seen in a, a, a week, a year, two years, you're starting to see results again. Um, now is when you want to double down and you want to be setting time aside. Well, actually, you should be setting time aside even when you're trying to get motivated again. After you've taken your break, you set a time designated, you set aside designated times to work on that thing. But when, when it starts building, you want to start setting, keep that schedule going. You're working on this thing every single day at the same time. Um, and it will keep you moving forward and it may even help you or prevent you from getting to, getting stuck again, right? Or hitting that plateau. Uh, and that's what you should strive, strive for. In my mind, after all of this, I think motivation and progress comes from consistency. And Lord knows I struggle with consistency. I'm a, an idea person. The initial stuff is where I get hyped up. I get into the things. I can push through a lot of pain. But when I start to get bored with something... It's hard for me to stay consistent, but I'm aware that for me to actually do something well, I'm going to have to stay consistent, uh, even if it means taking a step back and then coming back at it again. But that is what, in my opinion, and that's the advice I gave to myself when I was jotting all this crazy shit down, down is that uh, I'm going to get bored, I'm going to hit a plateau, but stay consistent, push through it, and eventually you're going to break through. Sit. That's the business topic of the day. I felt good about it. And and you guys let me know in the chat if you have any, you know, any nuggets of, of gold to add to that. Actually do it right now. Or call in 800 806 3518 extension 5 and go ahead and add to what I was just talking about and we'll play it. Actually, right now, because it's officially time for the Print Life Live Q&A. Hey, 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 hey. But before we get into it, cheers. 
Oh, it's so good. When it hits your lips. Whew. But I don't have my Tabasco. Usually, a couple, couple squeezes of Tabasco. Oh, it's so good. Now, it's time for the Q&A. And like I said, man, like, as much as I, I do love doing the chat thing, I love it. I, I enjoy interacting on it. But it can be hard to keep up with. You know what I mean? And there's a lot that goes down in it. So I'm going to address the chat. But before we do the chat, I want to take calls from the hotline. And I got to be honest with you. This excites me. I'm excited about this. So let me go ahead and refresh our hotline call in. Our, our call, our, 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 whatever. And a lot of you have called. So this is exciting, guys. Who's ready to start the live q and I'm excited. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play the first one. This is Brad from CTA Prince out of California. I had a question about the software. Um, so I know that the customer can go on and they can actually go through their entire job setup themselves, or you can jump. Well, before we get to your question, what's up, Brad from CTA? I met you guys at the um, at the ISS show. Thank you so much for calling in. I think that uh, it means a lot, dude, that you would take the time, put yourself out there, and actually call in. So thank you, Brad. It's good to hear from you, and I'm excited to answer your question. I'm going to rewind this a little bit. Um, so I know that the customer can go on and they can actually go through their entire job set up themselves or you can jump on the software and you can do a live quote with them uh, over the internet mm -hmm. the question i had was if i do a quote for someone and they like it and they don't want to go back through all the steps is there a way for me to save and place that job and then somehow send them a way to pay for the job through an yes so in in version 1.0 which is the one that's currently live on monumentlimited.com there is not, but it is a feature that was severely lacking. So in the, the version that we are developing and working on as we speak, absolutely. Whether you, well, what the, if the client does it, it's easy, right? It's easier for them to check out. But a lot of the times what happens is they call in because they just don't want to do it. And you got to do a quote for them. So you go through the steps, but maybe they're not ready to set up an account. Maybe they need to show it to their boss. So yes, from this point moving forward, once you've created their, th their thing, you can save it as a guest, and you will be able to email it to them directly. Um, they can also check out as a guest. So now, which is a feature that I didn't have on the original one, they will also be able to uh, to check out and utilize the system without creating an account. There are numerous benefits to creating a client account, but ultimately, they won't have to create and remember a password. But back to the initial question, yes. Once you've created the quote, you will be able to email it to them directly without them having an account or anything like that. You'll literally just go through the process. You'll get to the cart. You'll sit, You'll hit email quote. You'll enter their email address, and off it goes. So, yeah, dude, thank you for asking that question because it was a huge feature that was required that I didn't ha I even think to put into the original thing, and now like I realize how important it is. But it's got to be there.